first things first about bad business i saw this on my timeline and i thought this was absolutely incredible because this is i think the pinnacle of bad business for me this is like the 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 flipping you know the mount kilimanjaro of bad business sean diddy combs right courtesy of billboard sean diddy combs re reassigns his bad boy publishing rights back to artists and songwriters um the article says sean diddy combs has uh, get this pop up off has reassigned his publishing rights back to the artists and songwriters who helped build the label and founded bad boy entertainment mace faith evans deluxe 112 and the estate of notorious big are among the creatives who have already assigned agreements to regain those rights a bad boy representative has declined to disclose the terms of those deals. However, sources with knowledge of the situation say that the process reaching out to artists and writers began in May 2021 after Combs had turned down various offers to sell the catalog. While most of the parties have been contacted and have signed their offers, um, the search to locate and resolve agreements with a few artists is still ongoing. Publishing on behalf of Bad Boy in past years has been administered by EMI, who is owned by Sony Music Publishing, Sony Corporation of America, and EMI continues to administer Combs' own publishing. The thing that I hate about this sort of shit is that I hate to see black-on-black -black scamming. It's one of the worst things I hate to see, especially when somebody makes it out. Because, you know, usually to be a millionaire or billionaire, you have to be within like the, you know, the single digit percentile of the population. So I guess even the the odds of you becoming a millionaire when you're in a, you know, when you're in a flipping minority are even lower. Especially if you come from a particular type of area, you grew up in a particular type of way, you have a particular type of education. There, there are a lot of barriers that are kind of in front of you that you don't even know about that will kind of stop you from getting to that point. So when somebody does make it, I feel like it's their obligation to do right by the people that they kind of quote unquote left behind or by the right by the people that kind of look like them who come from the same place as them. That's just my opinion. It's a little bit airy fairy. It's a little bit flipping hippy dippy and naive and shit. I know. But my theory is that I just hate to see black on black scamming. I think it's awful. And in this case, the music industry is notoriously cutthroat, notoriously scummy anyway. Right. And a lot of these artists don't make a lot of money on their streams or on their music at all publishing and live events are usually some of the only ways and sometimes even merch that artists can actually make some money like 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 in any way shape or, or form for the music that, that they put out from residuals and whatever it may be right it's the only way that they can actually make some money and sometimes have the ability to kind of secure the future of their family they leave behind and they pass away did he <laughs> right refuse over the years to give his artists back their publishing they some of them com campaigned in mace's case they had beef with him to the point where it was it was getting really really like serious to the point where like you know some crazy shit could have happened between him and mace and he refused to give it back so my initial feeling when i seen this story i don't think he did this out of the goodness of his heart this is my theory i think more likely than not did he was probably conscious of how bad it would look if he decided to sell the catalog of bad boy entertainment without giving the publishing back to the you know the rights owners or the public or the people that basically made the music because it says here um that he was contacted um and he turned down an offer to sell his entire catalog and if you guys know in music quite a lot of artists have basically sold their catalogs like i don't know i think even justin bieber sold theirs recently um i forgot who else i think um neo did it I think um, Nelly did it and a few other people have kind of sold their catalogs. I'm not really too sure why these companies are buying these whole catalogs, but a lot of these people are, you know, a lot of artists are kind of cashing out and selling their entire catalogs. I think Future even did it as well. So I think Diddy knew he would look really bad if he sold the catalog of all these artists who have been campaigning and harassing and pleading to get their publishing back. He would look like a Scrooge McDuck of the Scrooge's McDuckus, right? He would look flipping awful. Or my other theory is this, or it's all compounded. My other theory is there's going to be a documentary about Diddy coming out soon. Whether it's a documentary that he makes, whether it's a documentary somebody else makes, he doesn't want his legacy to be that he was the guy all up in the videos, right? And that he was the guy having his hands in everyone's pockets. He doesn't want that image. So in order to get rid of that image, he's trying to reset the narrative by saying, hey, everyone kind of got their publishing back and to make it seem like he's this charitable type of guy. But it's too late. Exactly, it's too late now. 
Like everybody already knows what you're like. So that's the thing that really kind of annoys me about this whole issue. He has not done this out of the kindness of his heart. I'm pretty sure this is something just done for self-preservation's sake and to make sure no one thinks that Diddy has a bad business dude because for the most part, everyone that's worked with him, whether you've been watching Making of, Making of the Band, is it Making the Band, sorry, whether you are you know um, a hip-hop fan and you know his history with Bad Boy or you just know what he's kind of done since that, you'll know that in general he hasn't had the best um what you call it he hasn't had the best reputation when it comes to business the thing that's funny about this though is that i wonder if some of his karma for that bad business is how scummy he got deal he got dealt with with the whole diageo siroc thing because if i'm not mistaken he's currently in litigation with diageo the company that owns siroc because allegedly they don't want to pay him his royalties which is you know crazy millions they're withholding some royalties because he's basically claiming that he was responsible for blowing up Ciroc which he basically did even though Diageo made it seem like it was his brand he fronted it but he was a large reason why Ciroc kind of like went up in prominence and I think um originally he tried to get you know um he tried to get um he tried to be he tried to get paid in whatever was it residuals when you get paid a share of something sold he tried to get paid that way off of the original recipes of whatever Ciroc was they said no then he launched his own flavors like the watermelon and all this other stuff and they did better than some of the original kind of flavors and obviously Ciroc saw him make sorry um Diageo saw him making too much money and asking for too much control and they obviously cut the cut the deal short and now he's obviously asking for whatever money he's kind of owed so I wonder if a lot of that karma coming back to him with the Diageo thing is commonly um is because of the stuff that he did in the past with bad boy artists because it's pretty wild man but yeah he gave back the publishing um, i'm happy for those that got it the only thing that's really sad about this is that as they said in the article they're struggling to find some of the people connected like you know to kind of collect their royalties and give back their publishing and shit they're struggling to find them because some of the artists that made the music have passed away and they don't know where their extended family is so this guy held on to and rinsed all worth and all flipping monetary you know gain he could from these guys publishing rinsed it rinsed it fucking dry and then he handed it back to them like absolutely heinous shit i hate him and i hate black on black scammers i think it's the worst most bottom barrel um shit in the world and i wish we didn't do it more often but to be fair it is quite common you know what i mean like the, the, the smaller the minority usually the more flipping backstabber you are to each other and shit it's really really awful how that shit happens but i wish it didn't you know i really 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 wish it didn't 